which our industry members of the forum were very positive about, was that we should all, including industry, be getting together to make the case to the public about the necessity of this investment, or whatever the word is we're going to use. And that means industry being prepared to take some hits, because some, some of the things that get disinvested in may be your products. You know. But hopefully, if we can make it reinvestment and not disinvestment, industry, at the end of the day, also benefits from the reinvestment. And patients benefit more, because the new things, hopefully, are going to be more cost-effective and uh, better outcomes than the, than the old ones. So uh, I think I'm nearing the end of my time. Do you want me to spend one or two minutes on HTA and value as a prequel to our February 2013 meeting? Or should I? Sorry? Yep, OK. Um, OK, HTA and value. Um, we're going to be discussing this next year. So this is, as it were, um, my thoughts in advance, having worked up the agenda and the background paper. We're going to be looking. We decided to focus on three areas. The first is. How do you define and measure value? That's a pretty big question, actually. The second is, how do you factor those measurements of value into decisions about access and price? And the third is, how do value and innovation interact? Let me just say a little bit about what I mean by those. Dimensions of value. Lots of different ways of defining what value means. Um, the dictionary doesn't help. You can look at health outcomes at an individual or population level. You can look at other benefits for patients which actually don't translate easily into health. Choice, convenience, reassurance, a whole load of things which technologies and interventions can do for patients which don't give them a better health outcome score, but boy, they care about them. And if you asked a patient what value means, they would put those on the list. There's benefits to the wider system. You know, people can work, for example, when they couldn't before. There's an economic benefit to that. Um, and, there's, and there's value for money. So, you know, most people who are looking at value don't care about the money bit. The patient in a system that's paid for doesn't care about the money bit. But someone's got to care about the money bit. So the value for money has to factor in the costs against those other, other things. Very obviously, different stakeholders put different values on these different dimensions. And they can be measured in different ways, and indeed some are much better measured than others. So the health outcomes are quite well measured in all sorts of different ways. The wider societal benefits are often rather poorly measured. Economists are still arguing, I think, about how you measure the, you know, the benefit of work and uh, whether or not get someone got back to work and, and, and anyone benefited from it. So there's a number of different ways of, 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 of defining and measuring value, and there's a lot of controversy around that. The second area, factoring value into decisions varies enormously across system. Almost all systems these days say they base their decisions on access and price on value, but the ways in which they do it are enormously different, and the extent of formality differs a lot. One point to note is that decision makers are always thinking about incremental value. There is no such thing as absolute value. It's always the value of this as opposed to what we'd do if we didn't have it. And that, that's something that, that isn't, isn't always understood. The other thing that isn't always understood is that I don't think we've yet found in the developing the background paper a system in the world where the starting point is not the clinical and patient-related benefits. You know, they may then add in all sorts of things like costs um, and like you know, priorities and like equity of access and you know, a whole load of things. The list can get very long, and those of you who've been following the value-based pricing saga in the UK will know, you can get terribly clever and terribly sophisticated about how you weight qualities and you know, what you stick into this thing. But it's very difficult. We've not yet found a system that doesn't start from what is the health benefit to the patient. You know, so, so I think there is one point of agreement in, in how you define value. It's a question of what else you stick in and how you stick it in. The final area we're going to discuss at the forum meeting, and I think this is going to be the most interesting area, um, is value and innovation. And, and the, the agenda for this sub-discussion is, firstly, what is innovation and how do we define it? And it's interestingly, again, you know, there is a range of definitions in the literature about that. What are the arguments, and this has been featuring in the value-based pricing discussion in the UK, what are the arguments for attributing a value to innovation over and above the health benefits and cost savings and everything else that it brings? So once we've defined all the aspects of value that we think matter in a healthcare system, should we define, in addition, 
a value for innovation over and above what it does on all those things we've already defined. Now, there are arguments for and against that. And not all the arguments are necessarily in the industry's favour, actually. Um, then there's an issue about who should pay for innovation. If we do define innovation as something that we actually place a value on, who's, who's going to pay for that value? Is it a health cost? Is it, an, is, it, is, it, is it a cost that the economy should bear in some other way because it's producing wider economic benefits? Finally, how does the whole approach we've got to defining value and rewarding it affect the innovation system? So how do the different ways in which we measure value and reward it affect your ability to invest in innovation and your ability to, you know, to find financial backing for your new ventures? Key question and one that the industry is always raising in these discussions. So a very quick overview of some of the issues that are kind of hot in HTA at the moment. Not particularly a national focus, but I don't think there's anything I've mentioned that hasn't played out in some way and isn't playing out in some way in the UK at the moment. So, Thank you very much. So, hot stuff. Um, uh, as Chris alluded to, I think those speakers who have produced slides, uh, they will be available on the Wellhouse website. So there's an awful lot in there, in Chris's particular talk, that needs taking back to head office because, as Chris again has just said, much of it applies to the UK. The UK has led in many of these areas and value will be the hot stuff for 2013 as value-based pricing or whatever it's going to be called uh, starts to, uh, to get some flesh. Okay, we're going to have a break. Please do come back.